Right, no being around the bush, let's jump straight into it. This is the Sony FE 2.8 90mm macro GOSS lens. That is a mouthful. And today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go if you wanna build a website or an online store. Things we're covering in today's video, the topics, design and build quality, why I picked this up and its other potential uses, sharpness, a demo of OSS, autofocus speed for video, video examples, photo examples, negatives, and things you should know, as well as some general tips for macro that I learned along the way. Because I am not an expert at macro, I picked up this lens and really had no idea what I was doing, and I've kind of learned as I was going. So let's start with design and build quality. So this is one of Sony's G lenses. It's not quite the same quality as their GM lens. It's a step before that. The lens is made entirely of metal, and there is one focus ring on here, as well as a clutch, which we will talk about in a second. It has a 62 millimeter thread on the front there, so if you wanted to mount an ND or a different filter, you would need a 62 millimeter one. And the focusing distance is from 0.28 meters, 28 centimeters, and beyond. It's a pretty hefty lens coming in at 589 grams, so it's got some solid weight to it. By comparison, the 85 f1.8 from Sony is only 368 grams, so this is a pretty heavy lens. A big differentiator between this and some of Sony's other lenses is that this has a clutch. Now, if you're not familiar with what a clutch is, essentially it's the autofocus, manual focus switch you normally have on the side of a lens, but instead with this, it goes up and down. So when it's up, it's in your autofocus mode, and when it's down, it's manual focus. And then to control your manual focus, you just turn the ring as you would normally. I really like the clutch on this because it's much quicker if you're shooting something to just quickly pull it back and now you're in manual focus, opposed to having to find the switch on the side and flick it across. The clutch isn't something you get on a lot of Sony lenses. In fact, I don't think I've seen on any other Sony lenses, correct me if I'm wrong, but you do see it a lot on lenses that Fuji makes. You do have your distances on the ring there and the firmness of this is it's pretty firm compared to most of Sony's other lenses. If you compare it to say the 85, this by comparison is pretty loose. This is firm, but you kind of need it to be firm because when you're focusing for macro, you want little tiny minute adjustments. If it's too loose, you might go past that. So. I do quite like the firmness of this and it's useful when it comes to focusing. You do have a button on the side there as well, which you can assign to whatever you want. Autofocus, I autofocus, you can pick it in the menus, it's up to you. This is primarily a macro lens, but you can use it for portraits and other things as well. Because of that, there is three focus modes on here and that is basically the distance at which you're focusing. If you wanna go from 0.28 to 0.5 meters, which would be your macro mode, it would be the switch furthest to the, uh, the mount of the back here. If you wanna go into the middle, that's 0.5 to infinity, and then full is right on the end there. And that will be everything, so from 0.28 to everything, infinity. Now, that being said, it will focus at different speeds depending on the mode that you're in, so if you wanna focus on just macro, you're gonna to wanna to put it on 0.28 to 0.5. I've got a little test that I'm gonna show you in a little bit, just showing the differentiating speeds because it is quite substantial. The lens does have OSS, so optical steady shot, which I actually have another demo of, and it's quite good in terms of how it works. It does make a big difference. I'll show you that demo in a bit. This is a one-to-one -one macro lens, which means whatever you're taking a photo of, when that image is projected onto the sensor, it's gonna be at life size, one-to-one. -one. It is a focus by wire lens, meaning that it does have focus acceleration, but it is handled very well. I would say it's more similar to a traditional style of lens, and I do actually quite like the way this focuses. Focus acceleration sometimes can be pretty bad, and this lens handles it well. Let's talk about why I picked this lens up. Now, a common misconception with macro lenses is that they are just for super close-ups to get those macro shots, but this is actually a pretty good portrait lens. Typically, if I wanted to shoot around this focal length, I'd probably go with the 85 f1.8, but this is a much nicer lens in terms of how the image looks, it's a lot sharper, and overall I prefer this for portraits over the 85. It just looks a lot nicer. I will probably end up comparing these two so you can see the difference, but just take my word, much nicer lens. It's also a lot more expensive at 1100 US or 1500 Canadian. I originally planned to use this for the wedding season, for weddings in general, as a details lens, portrait style stuff, speeches, ceremonies. However, COVID hit and it's nearly the end of summer and still no weddings. So I haven't been using this as much as I wanted to. So most of the examples you're gonna see today are pretty much me just playing around with it. Some of the shots are also from winter because I've had it since March. 
That being said, all of the shots are pretty varied, so it gives you a good indication as to how this lens looks for photo and video. Other things that you might consider this lens for is to show details, textures of things you typically wouldn't see, super close-ups, because it is a macro lens, obviously, so that's gonna be good for things like food, nature, as well as in fine art and fashion, super close-ups of lips, eyes, that kind of thing. Those are all good uses for this lens. Before we go any further, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. Now, I know you've heard of Squarespace before. Don't pretend like you haven't. I, like a lot of creatives, struggle with the admin sides of things. I'm great at making videos and photos, but I suck at designing a website. So Squarespace really does make things simple, easy, and straightforward, and it's a huge reason I use them. If you don't have a website yet, first, what are you doing? It's 2020. But if you're looking at selling some products, digital products, presets, templates, you can go to squarespace.com. You can sign up for a 14 day free trial, test it out. You can pick one of their templates. There is a bunch to pick from, they all look great. You can add your content, your photos, embed YouTube videos if you want to. And once you're happy with how it looks, you realize it took you pretty much next to no time at all. You can get 10% off using the code right here, broadcast, and then your website's live. It's as easy as that. If you do run into issues, there's 24 seven customer service available to you, which I'm sure you've heard before. Whatever questions you have, so you're not left stuck figuring out how to do something, how to put something in a certain spot, how to format things, they've got you covered. So if you need a website, you need a store, Squarespace. So let's talk about sharpness and image quality of the 90mm f2.8. If you read any of the reviews out there, you'll see how much people rave about this lens and just how sharp it is. Now do yourself a favor, when you go out for the first time and take photos with this, don't check them out on the back of the screen on your camera. It's low res, it doesn't look good. Whack them onto your computer and view them there in just in all their glory and how stunning they look. First time I looked at the photos of this on the back of the screen, I wasn't that impressed. And then I put them on the computer and it's like, Wow, there's a big difference. So make sure you check out photos for the first time on your computer screen. Honestly, images are just gorgeous. They look absolutely lovely. I talked about before how certain lenses just have that, that look. You just can't describe it. You don't know why. It's almost like a glow straight out the camera. They just look beautiful. Again, this is one of those lenses. I don't know why, it's just good. That being said, it also is so sharp, it can be very unflattering. Any perfections in your skin is gonna get it. Also really great for showing how disgusting things are, like this really banged up old camera. There is not hiding a thing from a macro lens that is as sharp as this. Right, OSS, optical steady shot. Here's a test for you to show you how this works and how useful it can actually be, especially if you're shooting super close ups, but for anything really. So here's an example of how OSS works. Right now it's turned off. I'm shooting handheld. Look around the edges of the frame there. You'll see that there are a few little shakes. If we turn OSS on, it now smooths out those shakes. There's still a little tiny bit of movement as I am shooting handheld, but it smooths all that out. So that's how it will be useful for both photo and video if you don't have access or you can't use a tripod. Once again, off, there's those shakes, turn it on smooths them right out. So I am gonna be using this lens a lot for video and I figured I'd better include a autofocus video test because if you're looking at using it for video, you wanna see how it functions. So let's go to that. So if you wanted to use this for video for a wedding, something I wanted to use it for, this is how it will autofocus on people. It's set to f2.8 right now, which is why I'd probably use it for a uh, ceremony shot or something like that. So this is a pretty good example of how it's gonna autofocus on people's faces when it finds people. Face tracking is on. I'm using the Atomos Ninja, shooting in 4K. It's generally not that bad. Definitely usable, I'd say. How about closer up? Pretty good. As I mentioned earlier, there is a switch right here, which allows you to select the distance at which you're focusing. So if you're doing close-ups, you'd be on one mode, or if you're shooting the ceremony at a wedding, you'd be on a different mode. Depending on what it's set to, the lens will focus at different speeds. So I've done a little example video here to show you how that works. Okay, this is a test to show you how it focuses at different speeds, depending on the focus setting that you have on the lens. We're at f7.1 right now, and I'm gonna change the lens so it's at 0.28 to 0.5. So this is for your closest uh, setting. So you'll see it's pretty quick. It won't focus on the background there because it's past the 0.5 that it can 
focus on, but it will be quick when it comes to focusing up close. Background again there, obviously nothing, nice and close. It's quick. Let's change it to 0.5 to infinity. You'll now see that anything in the background it will focus on, and it'll also focus on things like my phone there if I hold it up, but it's going to be slower. Come on, pick it up. Like me. You see there, it's definitely slower, and it has a hard time picking things up. Back to the background. And then me again. Anytime today. It's slower. Evidently slower. Now let's change it to full. So now it'll do the background. It'll do me, but it'll also do close up me. 0.5 to 0.28 again. Really quick for close ups, but it won't do the background there again. Really quick for close ups. And then 0.5 to infinity. Not bad for close ups this time around with me. I think it was having a hard time with the phone because it's smaller. Pretty good there. And then back to full once more. So close up for me, a lot slower for close ups, but not too bad in general for things in the background there. Once more, and yeah, my exposure's off, but whatever. Gives you an idea of how it focuses at different speeds. Here's some video examples. Nothing special, just to show you some close ups, some other family stuff, just me shooting in general with this lens. I wish I had some weddings to include, but uh, COVID. One thing I do like to do on this channel is show you as many examples as possible. Now I did take a lot more photos with this lens than I did video. So here's a bunch of photos. Now I will say that shooting macro is not an easy task. It's not run and gun. It's about the most opposite from run and gun you can possibly be. You need patience, you need to be focused, literally and figuratively, and it's definitely a learning experience if you've never done it before. You're also gonna have a very shallow depth of field when shooting macro shots at something like f2.8. It's, it's gonna be hard to focus. It's razor, razor thin, and if you've got a moving subject like a flower, it's constantly moving around you're gonna to wanna to use a tripod. Shooting handheld macro is near on impossible. Now that being said, macro is great fun to learn. It's something that was new to me. It's really fun to get out and play around with different shots. You get to see things you literally would never have seen before. But there's some things that I learned along the way, some quick tips, if you will, that I'm gonna give you. Now one of those I did just mention, that's to use a tripod. You need to make sure you have as little movement as possible so you can literally just focus on focusing with the lens and not have to worry about anything else. If you're moving around and you happen to worry about focusing too, it just becomes too much. So a really steady tripod is gonna help you out hugely. Now obviously being an f2.8 lens, you are gonna be tempted to use that, but my recommendation is to go higher. It's gonna be easier to focus and images are gonna be sharper overall. To tack on from that previous point, if you are shooting macro stuff, you might be at a higher aperture. When you're closer to things, there's not as much light getting into the lens there. So a little tiny light like this, is gonna be really handy. This is the Aperture ALMX. Obviously the camera's on a tripod with the lens there. You can literally move this around, just hand hold it to get your shot and completely control the angle that the light is 
is coming in. So these are really handy to use. You can get the lighting exactly how you want that way and not have to worry about a big light being at a specific angle. And then another one is to use as fast a shutter speed as you can because when you're really, really close to things, a little tiny movement of the lens, even if OSS is on, a little wind can throw that shot off. So when you have a higher shutter speed, it's gonna snap it quicker and you're gonna get less movement in there. So a higher shutter speed that you can possibly use will really help out. And then manual focus and focus peaking as well as focus assist where it zooms in there are gonna be tools that you absolutely need to use when shooting macro. Focus assist is gonna allow you to zoom right in and nail your focus completely, like zoom into the furthest possible point. Focus peaking is obviously gonna help as well. And make sure you use the EVF on the camera. On the back of the screen, sometimes it's a little bit lower res, and the EVF is typically much higher res. So you're actually gonna see things clearer and see what's actually in focus. So those are some tips that I picked up along the way that I wanted to share with you. Things that you should think about or try out when it comes to shooting macro. So there we go, that is the 90 millimeter macro. Really like using this lens. I'm looking forward to be able to use it for weddings in the future. I have a couple coming up in the next couple of months. Maybe I'll report back then once I've used it a little bit more. Okay, you know what to do with those buttons down below if you wanna click them. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching. Take care, see you later.